morning. It's hard to believe that our week together is about over. I've enjoyed spending time in the mornings with each one of you, and I hope that, like me, you have been inspired to keep growing, to keep growing every day in good characteristics that Peter advises us to continue to develop every day of our lives so that we'll be ready to reach heaven. Did you look in the mirror this morning? Does your face reflect the love of Jesus? Are you becoming more like him? Were you able to be more kind to your family members and co-workers yesterday? Have you thought of a way to show kindness to a fellow believer? Praise God. After this week, don't forget to ask yourselves these questions so that every day you will keep growing. Growing so that one day we won't just live for Jesus here on earth but we will live with Jesus in heaven. Let's talk to God now as we begin. <clears throat> Father, again, we come to you in prayer, and we thank you for helping us to grow. Continue to show us our need to grow more and more each day. And today, I ask that you will teach us how to love the people that don't know you. Some of them are difficult to love, but we know that with your help, we can learn to love even the worst because that's what you did and that's what you do. Thank you for loving even me. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, we're going to look at the last of the eight characteristics that Peter advises us to continue to grow in and that is love. Love is God's great compassion for the world. Yesterday, we saw how God calls us, first of all, to love Him. And then He asks us to love our brethren in the church. Now, He calls us to show His love and compassion to the lost people of the world. What have you done to show God's love to a non-believer this week? If you haven't done anything, why not start making this a priority in your life of growth in Jesus? Let's read together again 2 Peter 1, 5-7. It says, But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. Faith, virtue, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness, brotherly kindness, and love. These are the things that Peter calls us to be sure that we have in our life and to make them ours. And not just to make sure they're in our life, but to keep them growing in our lives. We need to actively pursue growing in these areas every day of our life. These need to be priorities. It is these things that will determine the fruitfulness of our lives. Having established what we need to go after, Peter gives us one warning and two encouragements. I like that he gives double the encouragement, don't you? Let's start with the warning so that we can end with the encouragements. That means we're going to skip a verse, but we'll come back to it. We'll now go to verse 9 of 2 Peter 1. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. 
if there's no sense in your soul that these eight things are the things you need to go after, if these are not the pursuit of your life, there's something wrong with you. If you profess faith, but you don't see that the goal of your life should be the pursuit of these things, you're wasting your time professing faith. Peter says we are nearsighted, blind, and forgetful. We're nearsighted because we have lost sight of the fact that Jesus will come in judgment one day and we'll see if his investment in us has grown or not. We are blind because we don't even realize what our life is about. We must even have forgotten that we're a Christian because we aren't pursuing holiness. And holiness is the opposite of sin. So if we're not pursuing holiness, we're probably falling into sin. Don't sit in church feeling great if you don't feel the need to pursue these things. That's the warning. Now let's look at the two encouragements. To do that, we will go back to verse 8 and look at the first encouragement. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. These qualities are critical to your Christian usefulness. If you give up easily and are always critical, you'll not be effective for Christ. If you pursue faith, virtue, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness, brotherly kindness, and love, they become evident in your life in increasing measure, and you will be effective and fruitful. You pursue these things, and you will be effective and productive. The next encouragement is that you will know that you are in Jesus Christ, and you will know that you are on your way to heaven. Let's read that in verses 10 and 11. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's review for a minute what we've learned this week. As you have obtained faith in Christ and stand in it, now apply yourself diligently to advance in moral excellence. As you stand in that, don't be satisfied, but press on to increase your knowledge of God's will. As you stand in God's will, don't be satisfied, but be diligent to enlarge your capacities of self-control and mastery of your passions. As you stand in that, don't be satisfied, but cultivate every form of patience and serenity so that you can persevere. And in that, let devoutness and piety and the sweet love of God flourish. In that, strive to kindle your affection for other believers. And in and through it all, grow in love to all men. In other words, forward, forward, press on, advance, never stop growing. The Word of God warns us against being lazy in our faith and drifting away from Jesus Christ, who's our only hope. And the Word encourages us to fight the good fight of faith and take hold on eternal life. We can find that in 1 Timothy 6, 12 and 19. It also tells us to lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and run with perseverance the race that is set before us, Hebrews 12.1. To press on toward the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus, Philippians 3.14.
to advance and grow and go forward in virtue and knowledge and self-control and patience and godliness and brotherly affection. And to top it all off in love. 2 Peter 1, 5 through 7. In this way, reassure our hearts and make our confidence firm that we are indeed called to share in God's glory and excellence as we just read in 2 Peter 1, verse 10. So here's the application. Every day we've been asking questions about the different areas we've looked at. Now I'm going to go through questions for all of them. Are you strengthening your faith through obedience? Are you making every effort towards moral excellence? Are you making every effort to increase your knowledge of God's character and His will? Are you making every effort to strengthen your power of self-control? Are you making every effort to enlarge your capacity for perseverance? Are you making every effort to cultivate godliness and develop a heart for God? Are you making every effort to grow warm in your affection for your fellow believers? Are you making every effort to stir up love in your will for the person that you dislike most? If these things are in you and increasing, you will not be fruitless as we saw in 2 Peter 1 verse 8. And you will never stumble as we saw in verse 10. And you will enter the eternal kingdom of Christ as we read in verse 11. But if these things are not your earnest concern, then it's because you have shut your eyes to the beauty of God's promises and have forgotten the humble exhilaration of being forgiven. I hope none of us have forgotten how wonderful it was when we realized God's great love for us and what his forgiveness means for our lives. As we move forward in our Christian life, may we continue to ask these questions and be sure that we never, ever, ever stop growing. For one last time, let's bow our heads and pray together. Father, we want to take the Apostle Peter's advice and diligently work and take advantage of every opportunity that you send us to grow in faith, virtue, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness, brotherly kindness, and love for those who don't know you yet. Our goal is a life lived with you here on earth and an eternity spent with you in heaven. We don't want to go to heaven alone. We want as many as possible to be drawn to you through what they see in our lives, a reflection of you. Thank you for giving us all that we need to accomplish this. Keep us growing. In Jesus' name, amen.